as a uh, continuation to section 10.2, the uh, calculus of parametric equations, I want to talk now about areas. So in the first short video, what we talked about uh, was tangent lines, now we do areas. All right, so we know that the area under the curve when you have some y's of some function of x from a to b, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Area is equal to integral from a to b of f of x dx, right? Now here's the thing. If the curve is traced out once by the parametric equation, so now x is a function of t and y is a function of t, so from alpha and beta is what t falls between, then we can calculate the area formula by using the substitution rule of the definite integral. So if you have the area under the curve between a to b of y dx, well that's just equal to the integral from alpha to beta. Now remember alpha and beta are the um, starting and end points for t. g of t, which is y, and then the derivative of um, x with respect to t, and that's what f prime of t dt is. Or just without this, it's just the integral, if you flip it around, from uh, beta to alpha of uh, g of t f prime of t dt, depending on how your alpha and beta is defined. All right, but just remember this formula here, so just keep this handy. So the area is the integral from alpha to beta, g of t f prime of t dt, where g of t is the parametric equation for y, and f prime of t is the derivative of um, x with respect to t, basically. All right, so let me work you with an example. So find the area under one arc of this cycloid, all right, that looks like this, okay, where x is equal to, now r is just a constant, like the radius here, okay, theta minus sine of theta, so it's a parametric equation because x is defined by theta, and y is equal to r times 1 minus cosine of theta. All right, so if you look from 0 to 2 pi r, all right, this is what the one arch looks like. So we want to find this blue shaded area here. All right. So one arch of the centroid is given by from zero, or theta, excuse me, bound between zero and two pi, right? So what that's gonna be is that's gonna help define our bounds of integration. All right, so using the substitution rule, we know what y is and we know what x is. So if you look back, x is r theta minus sine of theta. So that means dx is r one minus cosine of theta d theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace y with this, and our dx gets replaced by this. So watch what happens. The bounds of integration stays right here. So before, we had 2 pi r, all right, because that's what this is, this arch here. But remember, our um, bounds of parameter have to match theta. So we switched it from 2 pi r to 2 theta. So r1 minus cosine of theta, that's my y. r1 minus cosine of theta d theta, that's my dx. All right, so just a little bit of algebra here. Combining this, the r squared, remember that's just a constant, so I'm just pulling that out here. So then I have to integrate from 0 to 2 pi, 1 minus cosine theta squared d theta. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to FOIL this out. I'm going to write it as 1 minus cosine theta times 1 minus cosine theta and get this. All right, so I'm going to have to um, integrate this. All right, so this right here, what I did here is I power reduced this to get this um, pretty expression right here. And then from here, it's just as simple. This you can integrate, this you can integrate, and this right here you integrate with the u substitution. So when you integrate this, all right, you end up getting 3 halves theta. All right, that's because the um, 1 half and one in this one combined to three halves, that's where that comes from. Cosine of theta integrates as two sine of theta, and this right here, this one half cosine two theta, just integrates as um, one four sine two theta. Simply plugging this in for theta here, you get this, and that's the area under the curve right there. I encourage you to download these and um, look back them and I'm going to pause our lecture here and record the next video for arc length below.